How is your IELTS preparation going? Is it easy? Is it difficult? Well, tell us in the comments below. We always love to read your comments. Today, we've got another practice speaking test with Min from Korea, who does pretty well in some areas of the speaking test. But as always, there are things that we could take away, both you and I, we could learn from Min, and I hope to show you that in this video. Let's go. Great, so I have my headphones in. I'm ready to listen to uh, Min, who's going to take us through the full test. Our examiner is David today, and I'd like you, as always, to make some notes as you go along, take away something and kind of be prepared to give your feedback on Min's answers. What areas of the test do you think he does well? And don't forget that in the speaking part of the test, you will have four components which are marked. The first one is fluency and coherence. It's your ability to speak at length and develop your ideas. Remember that you don't actually have to answer the question completely. Um, you are allowed to go off topic or tangentially, uh, but just remember that you've got to keep talking. The next component is lexical resource, then we have grammatical range and accuracy, and finally pronunciation. And for each one, you'll get 25% of the score. And don't forget that in the speaking and the writing component, the final mark is actually rounded down. Okay, it's an important one to remember. Right, I'm going to press play, let's go. Hello. Hello. And welcome to this practice exam conducted by IELTS Daily. My name is David, and I'm your practice IELTS speaking examiner. The questions in this test are designed to simulate the IELTS speaking test. So let's begin. What's your first name, please? Sorry? What's your first name? My first name is Min. Interesting start. Uh, Min didn't quite get the first question, which is, what is your first name? That's okay. He said sorry, and the examiner was able to repeat himself. Great. At the beginning of the IELTS test, you need to provide some identification, usually your passport, but as this is a practice test, there's no need for that today. Are you ready to begin? Yep. Great. All right, so let's talk about your hometown. Can you tell me where your hometown is? My hometown is Busan in Korea. Yeah, and the place is uh, very famous for tourism. Uh, for example, kind of uh, beaches and uh, Actually famous at uh, seafood, kind of. Okay, I'm just going to jump in here. It's really important with pronunciation that you have to distinguish and know the difference between the short I sound, I, and the long E sound. The difference between I and E. And in this case, I think Min made a small mistake. I think he wanted to say the word beaches, beaches. One of the best ways is to smile as you do it, beaches, okay? And if you, if you say the short I sound, it can be a very unpleasant word, okay? And that will be the same for three words, which if you get them wrong, uh, you, may, you may cause a problem for yourself. So those three words are beaches, peace, and sheet. Beaches, peace, and sheet. Don't say the short I sound because it could cause you some problems. And the second problem that uh, Min had here was that he said it's famous and he should have said it's famous for. If I remember, I think he said it's famous at. So it should be, it's famous for its beaches. How can I say the low fish mm. uh, and Korean style sushi? Mm, yeah, kind of that. And how often do you visit your hometown? Actually, when I just stay in Korea, I always stay in my hometown because my university is uh, in Busan too, and my house is in Busan too. Then I just go to uni and go to gym, just come back to house. Yeah, that's my daily life. During this question, he made a couple of mistakes, and I noticed that the same mistake continues throughout the test, and he often forgets his article, and the article is a uh, and the, and if you're one of those people that forgets the article, please make sure that you spend a little bit of time focusing on it. He said, go to gym. 
and it should have been go to the gym. I go to the gym. And then he said, I come back ho- home, or I think he actually said, I come back to house, actually. It's better in that case to say, I come home. So home is usually the direction, so I come home. And can a foreigner do or see anything interesting in your hometown? Ah, yeah. Uh, in this day, uh, my hometown is famous for cafe. Uh, actually, the normal cafe is just, caf- just coffee and a little dessert. But in our space, has the... Uh, how can I say? Interestingly here, he actually said famous for cafe. It sh- a better way would be it's famous for cafes because we're talking generally about what the general situation is in that place. He has repeated the word how can I say a couple of times. And for me, that's indicating, it's showing to me that maybe he's looking for language. And remember that in the fluency and coherence section, you have to keep going. And if you're spending a lot of time looking for language, this will be called language-related hesitation, and it's going to limit you to band seven. Uh, the one city? In the one city, a uh, half uh, part is almost cafe. And uh, we have lots of tourism place, at, and at the pl- tourism place has lots of coffee shop too. It seems to me that Min has a problem with plurals. Singular and plural, one and many. So he said, uh, he said, we have lots of tourism place. And it should have been, we have lots of, we have many tourist places. Okay. And I think he also forgot the plural of cafes as well. You'll see this a lot through his test. So please, if you're watching this, Min, make sure you focus on your singular one and many plural. And then if you... Uh, go to the Busan. You can drink coffee w- with uh, watching beaches and look some sunset. Yeah, I think it's kind of beautiful place to hang out. One of the hardest things that you can learn in English is the difference between the verbs see, watch, look. They're really common words, but they have different meanings. So I think he said you can watch the beaches, okay? When you watch something, you usually have a reason for doing it. So we watch somebody do something. You can watch the TV. It's an extended time. So if I were Min, I would say something like, I like to go to Busan because I can watch things happening at the beach or I can watch people at the beach. If you just want to look at the beach or see the beach, that's that's perfectly fine. But we wouldn't normally say watch. I like to go to Busan because I like to see the sea. I like to see beaches. I like to look at the beach. I like to watch the sunset. Remember that watch the sunset is the process of the sun going down. So that's a longer process. You're watching something do something else. Therefore, If you don't know the difference between watch and do and and, uh, watch and look and see, please take some time. Go and have a a research on the internet. There's many, many resources available on the internet which will show you the difference between those three verbs. They're common mistakes. I don't want you to make the same mistakes. And is your hometown a good place for children to grow up? Maybe it depends on area, Uh, some leech area, yeah. Absolutely, but... Some good things from this last part. In the previous part, I forgot to mention to you that he did actually say it's a cool place to hang out. So he's showing his range of lexis, his range of words. So hang out is a phrasal verb. I encourage you, if you can use phrasal verbs correctly, please try to to use them. Now, he made a pronunciation mistake here, and this is a very common problem, especially for Japanese and Korean speakers. So if you are from Japan or Korea, this may be a problem for you, which is the difference between rich and lich. So we're, we're focus on, focusing on the l and the r sound. 
Remember in a previous video we had hero, hero had a similar problem, l and r. And then he also said, maybe it depends on area. I like the fact that he's using complex grammar, maybe it depends on, but again, he's forgotten the article, which and it should have been, maybe it depends on the area. Normal place is just, I think, normal. Just jumping in here. Normal place is just normal. Mm, seems a bit awkward, this sentence. Again, it should be normal places, because he's speaking generally. Normal places are just standard. Don't repeat the word normal. So normal places are just standard. Nothing special. Uh, Seoul is our capital city. Uh, for edu for Then I think for educate kind of education for children is good for maybe it's good in Seoul. Okay, well now I'm going to ask you some questions about evenings. So do you have much free time in the evenings? Uh, yeah, in weeks, weekends I have lots of free time in evening. In weekends I have lots of free time in evening. I think he could have expanded much more here. There was a little bit of a mistake. It should have been um, in the week or at weekends. I have a lot of free time in the evenings. Just be careful that you get the right preposition for the right kind of situation. That's one, one thing to notice. A lot of people mix up prepositions. And again, his answer was really short. I think he could have explained lots more. You know, at the weekend, I have lots of free time. I tend to, you know, spend it playing video games or catching up with some friends or watching a film, watching a movie. I remember last weekend, I actually visited a friend of mine who lives just in a neighborhood close by. Do you notice that there was a little bit more expansion there and it was completely invented? I didn't actually do that. And remember that in the test, if you are struggling for ideas, you are allowed to make up your own stories. Okay. And is your evening routine the same every night? Yeah, in weekday, I just uh, go to go to uni and have some lunch with friends and come back to my area and go to the gym with my friends and hang out. Some great things here. Hang out with my friends, great language. And in this case, he didn't forget to use the gym. I go to the gym. If you listen back, he actually included the article, which is great. So it's clear to me that he knows what to do. It just seems that in previous sentences, he just completely forgot. And he did make the mistake. He said, I think he said in weekends. It should be at the weekends or Americans might say on weekends or during the week or um, on a weeknight. It, there are many different prepositions that you could use for these uh, phrases, so make sure you use them accurately. Okay, and um, in your country, what is a popular evening activity for young people? Ah, mm. maybe I think uh, Korean people like to drink, then... Uh, there was a lot of content-related hesitation here. I don't think he was looking for words. I just don't think that he knew what to say. Um, so remember that content-related re hesitation is up on the band 8 or band 9. It's acceptable. I don't think that he's going to be there yet because there's too, too many pauses and slow parts of the speech. But I just wanted to highlight the difference between language and content-related hesitation. If you go to the city hall, nearby city hall has lots of... Uh... Lots of bar, kind of Korean style. If you go to the city hall, nice complex grammar, but it was let down by lots of bar. And this is a consistent problem all the way through many, many problems related to singular and plural. It should have been lots of bars. Uh, and you can drink kind of Korean traditional drink and Japanese style sake or just ginger ale kind of this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe drinking thing. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to ask you some questions about your neighborhood. How do you feel about your neighbors? Uh, I live in, a, in an apartment, but sometimes we have a problem with 
kind of noise noise thing because uh, they're so sensitive about noise. Now, this is not related to Min's uh, speech, but it seems to me that Min likes to make some noise. I don't know if this is true or not, but he said that his neighbors are sensitive to noise and there have been some problems with him. So um, it seems to me that Min doesn't have a good relationship with his neighbors, which is a shame. I don't know if he's telling the truth. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. But remember that if you're living in an apartment block, it's really difficult and it's difficult to live with people around you. So you always have to be respectful, don't you? Then maybe I think we don't, uh, I, I don't have a good relationship with neighborhoods. I don't have a good relationship with neighborhood. So a couple of problems there. I don't have a good relationship, the difference again between the L and the R, relationship with my neighbors, not with my neighborhood really. So I don't have a good relationship with my neighbors. In your country, do neighbors tend to be close to one another? Yeah, it depends on person, but... This answer was really short and he said it depends on person. It should have been obviously that it depends on the person. Again, a forgotten article. I would say that he could have expanded a lot more here rather than just repeat it depends on person with a pause and then it depends on person again, repeated the same thing. That for me would be a problem because when we look at the score later, you'll see this idea of repetition and filling phrases. It's very difficult. Now, how would you describe your neighborhood? Sorry, describe? Mm, how would you describe your neighborhood? Uh, how would you describe your neighborhood? And at this point, Min is uh, looking for lots of ideas. The pauses are too long. My advice to you is if you're in the test, please don't try to, to think too long about an answer. It may be that you actually have to invent something and make something up. It's not really a good idea if you're spending a lot of time thinking of ideas. So what's in your neighborhood? What's in? Hmm. Sorry, I can't understand. Okay, no problem. We'll move on to the next question. Okay. So, is your neighborhood a safe place for children to play alone? Yeah. Uh, I haven't been in America, but when I was there, it's li it looks a little dangerous to, for children because every people looks a little annoying kind of that. Uh, they are just screaming in the load. Yeah. I think that's a little dangerous, looks like dangerous for children. I don't quite know uh, the reason why he's answering about America. Um, he's ask, the examiner was asking about, is his neighborhood a safe place for children? So he is going a little bit off topic here, but it's fine because he's trying with fluency. Um, there were a couple of pronunciation issues. I think he meant to say loud rather than Lord. Um, but I think that he could have expanded and talked about his own neighborhood first. It wasn't a particularly difficult question, but I think he's struggling a little bit to answer it. Kind of educating thing. Uh, but Korea is kind of safe country, I think. Similar as Japan. Uh, yeah, then in my country, uh, just lots of children go to the academy, kind of piano or just studying math or science and they just come back at night late night but it doesn't cause any problem yeah i think it's pretty safe place for children ah interesting i just told you that he wasn't really answering the question but he actually came back and answered the question and started talking about korea he didn't specifically talk about his neighborhood i think he could have talked about that which was is his neighborhood a safe place for children and you could you could probably quite easily talk about something like that. Okay. Well, in the next part of the test, I'm going to give you a topic, and I would like you to speak for one to two minutes. Okay. You will have one minute to think about what you want to say, and I'll give you a pen and some paper to make notes if you want. Is that clear? Yep. Great. So here's your paper and your pen. And please turn it over. 
and you have one minute to prepare. So describe a sporting event you went to. What do you think about this one? Do you think that this one's a difficult question? I think it could be a difficult question because not everybody is sporty or not everybody enjoys going to sporting events. So what you could do is talk more generally and maybe say, I've never been to a sporting event, but I have watched you know, the Olympic Games or the Winter Olympic Games online. And you can use that as an idea which might help you if you have never been to a sporting event. You may even want to talk about something from your childhood when you used to play sport at school. Don't worry if you've never been to a specific sporting event, but try to think of other things in the back of your mind that could help you through. All right. Thank you. Now, I would like you to talk about sport. Remember, you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? Okay. Uh... First, I want to talk about uh, the match of American football because I was an uh, American football player when I was uh, in my university. I was in the American football club. Uh, yeah, and that time uh, I went to the Busan Stadium. It's kind of a huge place. We lent that studio for our match uh, and we did match with first prize university mm, and that time uh, lots of people came for watching our show and that time was my first play my first match to playing American football that time I was nervous because I'm junior, uni- I'm, I was jun- university junior and maybe I didn't know all of the plan, kind of exercise plan. Yeah, then I was nervous, but my team leader, I think he is kind of cool guy. He always told me, it will be, everything will be okay. You can, you can do it. He talked like that, then after that, I feel kind of ad- adrenaline. And uh, at the first first time, I did lots of fail. Then, but at the time, the other teammates said, it's okay, because it's your first time, but everything will be okay. And after that, I find my I got my condition and I... Okay. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you, but that's the two minutes. Well done. Okay, what did you think of Min's part two? I've got a few ideas that I want to give to you and talk about what he did well and any areas where he could improve. He said lots of people came for watching our show. It would have been better to say lots of people came to watch our show. Then he had a, a couple of mistakes with pronunciation. Stadium stadium and people L- the, again the last part people rather than people l- need to finish with the hard l sound he said that was my first play a better f- way to say it would be that was my first match and that was the first game i'd played so that was the first game i had played different grammar forms there he said i was university junior he should have said i was Ah, university junior. Again, article problem. A few times through his speech, I've heard him say, and then, rather than, so just be careful with the difference between then and then. If you're struggling, put your teeth, uh, open your teeth and put your tongue between your teeth. Then, 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 then. Um, then he said, after that, I feel kind of adrenaline. I liked um, the fact that he used after that, which is grammar. Adrenaline is a higher level word. Um, after that, I felt adrenaline. Uh, at first time, I did lots of fail. It should have been, at first, I made lots of mistakes. Or at first, not at first time, at first, I failed a few times. I think he did pretty well in his part two speech. He elaborated on his answers. He took the full two minutes 
I think he could have been faster. Sometimes his speech was a little bit slow, but overall, that was a pretty good job. Well, thank you. I want to stay on the topic of sport. So in your opinion, is it important for children to play sport at school? Yeah, I think it's important. Uh, for example, Messi's case, we just use only plus or minus in the, our daily life. But sports thing is important, I guess, because uh, when you're playing sports with your classmate, you, it can grow up some your friendship and kind of leadership, leadership thing. And you can know the, you, you can know the way to conversation with friends or the other people. Yeah, then I think it's important for children. So at the beginning of this speech, I think he said maths case. Pronunciation there is really hard, math. And I think a better way to say this would be, in the case of maths. Then he said, when you playing sport. I like the fact that he's trying with complex grammar, but it should have been when you play sport. Because it's talking generally, you have to talk about this habit. And when we talk about habits, we use the present simple. When I do my homework, when I see my friends, when I go to the theatre, all right, we use the present simple. And then he said, you can grow up some of your friendship. I'm not entirely convinced that's the right language there. So it probably should have been, you can build some friendships or you can make friends more easily. You can make friends more easily. And how do you think technology is changing sport? Uh, from what I was young, I was kind of sportsman. Yeah, but when I was young, uh, the sports technology is not good as much as now. But when I playing the American football in uni, that time I was so surprised about uh, sports technology because there are lots of um, mechanical thing and medicine thing. Uh, I can't see kind of dead things uh, when I was young. Then I was so surprised. Yeah, I think then, yeah, that's all. So many things to talk about in this particular section. He started with, from I was young, and it, a better phrase would be, since I was young. But then he actually corrected himself and said, when I was young. I think when is probably the most preferable term here for me. He said, sports technology is not as good as much as now. He tried to, to make a comparison here, but he didn't quite get it right. A better phrase would be, sports technology was not, because it's in the past, sports technology was not as good as it is now. Sports technology was not as good as it is now. Did you hear how fast I said that? Wow. Sports technology was not as good as it is now. Please try to focus on joining and linking your pronunciation together into chunks of language. Then he said, when I playing, um, it would be better to say something like when I played or whenever I played. And that's complex grammar too. Then he said lots of mechanical thing and it should have been lots of mechanical things and medicine things or medical things. Plural again, the same mistake keeps creeping through. Are team sports more important than individual sports? Why or why not? Yeah, I agree about that question. I, I think the team sports is more, more important. It's clear here that Min didn't quite catch the question because David the examiner asked, are team sports... Mm -mm -mm -mm. And then he said, yes, I agree. You can't answer the question yes, I agree, if the question is, do you think, da, 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 okay, or are team sports? Yes, they are, or no, they are not. So that would be a small mistake there. It's comprehension of the question. As I told, uh, kind of friendship, and
gosh, there's a really long pause here. He's trying to find uh, something to say. He just started with, as I told. That's not possible to say in English because you tell somebody something. You can say, as I told you already. As I mentioned already. As I said earlier. Those are different ways that you could say, as I said earlier, as I mentioned already, but not as I told. But you could say, as I told you already, as I told you already. Yeah, different ways that you could say it, but not as I told. You know how to do the... Uh, you can know how to pre pretend to person. Uh, yeah. At this point for me, it seems like Min is actually quite struggling to get through and get a full developed answer. Um, he often sh finishes his answer with, so yeah. And it's like he hasn't given too much. So for me, the fluency and coherence mark is now really going to be limited. We're falling down the ladder a little bit more. We're probably somewhere around band six because he's not extending and developing his answers. And the, co the cohesion between the sentences is a little bit faulty. And what makes a sporting event exciting to watch? Mm. Gosh, another very long pause. It seems like he's trying to develop content. Again, not necessarily looking for language, but I think he could do much better. I think starting the, the sentences as, almost as soon as the examiner finishes is going to really help you guys. So try to take what Min has done here and learn from it. For example, uh, one of my friends is really big fan of uh, Asnar, the football club. And he always watching that uh, Asnar's match and he feel like uh, he's the member. He feels like he is in the member of the Asnar. Always he put uniform and he charging the arsenal. Uh... After his long pause, he started with one of my friend is, and it should have been one of my friends is. Always, 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 always use the plural of the uh, noun when you use one of. So one of my, you know, neighbors, one of my cars. Then he had a problem with lily and really. It's again, it's this le and re problem. He said lily and it should have been really. If you are from a country that struggles with le and re, please practice that one. And then he talked about his friend and he said, he always watching and it should be, he always watches, he always watches. And then he said, he feel like, and it should have been, he feels like. Lots to learn from that one. I think then, then I think, uh, Spurs can make the person is the person, Spurs can make the person, uh, in the same team. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And uh, how does sport influence people's lives? Mm. Yeah, maybe actually they got lots of money and they got lots of famous. For example, Ronaldo or Messi, they have lots of followers in Instagram. But I think sometimes their life is a little annoying. Many people, uh, if some people find a day, they, they want to say hi or take a picture, they, they want kind of that. Uh, actually, a few times they are glad too, but I don't want to. I think that uh, in the daily life, they their daily life is uh, not happy as much as the normal person. That brings us to the end of Min's sample speaking. What do you think of his answer? I was quite impressed. Um, I think there were a few things that we can all learn from here. Let's talk about his score section by section. The first section that I want to talk about is his fluency and coherence mark. Now, for him to get a band six, he needs to speak at length. He needs to have occasional loss of coherence. 
Um, I think that he does this well here. He uses a range of connectives, um, not always appropriately for a band six. A strict examiner might look at him and say a band five because he may be penalized for these very long pauses. Sometimes there was self-connection and some self-correction. I just corrected myself there. And sometimes there was slow speech. So a strict examiner might award him five here. Lexical resource, this would be somewhere either a six or a band seven. For a band seven, it does say uses vocabulary flexibly, uses some less common and idiomatic vocabulary. He used some phrasal verbs in this case. He had an awareness of the style and collocation. So I'm going to be nice to him today and give him a seven. But it could be that he scores a six in this section. Grammatical range and accuracy. I wanted him to score seven, which would need complex structures and frequent error-free sentences. But unfortunately for me, there were just too many of the same mistakes that came through. The plural and singular mistakes, but also the mistakes with the, um, the verbs, the first person and the third person, and also the articles, forgetting the articles all the time. Pronunciation. He did pretty well, but had this same l and r mistake. Um, it could be that he scored seven on one day and six on another day. But overall, for me, I would give him a band six. And that would leave him with a six, seven, six, six, which would be 6.25 average. And as we know, the scores are rounded down. Therefore, it would be an overall band six. Well done to Min today and well done to you guys for watching this and persevering through. I'm Chris from IELTS Daily. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give this video a like and a thumbs up. We'll be back with another speaking practice video. Bye for now. Hello. Hello. And welcome to this practice exam conducted by IELTS Daily. My name is David and I'm your practice IELTS speaking examiner. The questions in this test are designed to simulate the IELTS speaking test. So let's begin. What's your first name, please? Sorry? What's your first name? My first name is Min. Great. At the beginning of the IELTS test, you need to provide some identification, usually your passport, but as this is a practice test, there's no need for that today. Are you ready to begin? Yep. Great. All right, so let's talk about your hometown. Can you tell me where your hometown is? My hometown is Busan in Korea. Yeah, and the place is uh, very famous for tourism. Uh, for example, kind of uh, beaches and uh, actually famous at uh, seafood. Kind of, how can I say, the low fish mm. uh, and Korean style sushi. Mm, yeah, kind of that. And how often do you visit your hometown? Actually, when I just stay in Korea, I always stay in my hometown because my university is uh, in Busan too, and my house is in Busan too. Then I just go to uni and go to gym, just come back to house. Yeah, that's my daily life. And can a foreigner do or see anything interesting in your hometown? Ah, yeah. Uh, in this day, uh, my hometown is famous for cafe. Uh, actually, the normal cafe is just co just coffee and a little dessert. But in our space has the uh, how can I say uh, the one city. In the one city, a uh, half, uh, half of part is almost cafe, and. Uh, we have lots of tourism place, at, and at the tourism place has lots of coffee shop too. And then if you uh, go to the Busan, you can drink coffee with uh, watching beaches and look some sunset. Yeah, I think it's kind of beautiful place to hang out. And is your hometown a good place for children to grow up? Ah. Uh... Maybe it depends on area, uh, some rich area, yeah, absolutely. But normal place is just, I think, normal. Uh, Seoul is our capital city. Uh, for 
for then I think for educate kind of education for children is good for maybe is good in Seoul. Okay, well now I'm going to ask you some questions about evenings. So do you have much free time in the evenings? Uh, yeah, in weeks, weekends, I have lots of free time in evening. Okay. And is your evening routine the same every night? Yeah, in weekday, I just uh, go, to, go to uni and have some lunch with friends and come back to my area and go to the gym with my friends and hang out and <laughs> study later. Yeah, that's my daily life. Okay, and um, in your country, what is a popular evening activity for young people? Ah, mm. maybe I think uh, Korean people like to drink. Then uh, if you go to the city hall, nearby city hall has lots of, uh, lots of bar, kind of Korean style. Uh, and you can drink kind of Korean traditional drink and Japanese style sake or just ginger ale kind of this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe drinking thing. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to ask you some questions about your neighborhood. How do you feel about your neighbors? Uh, I live in, a, in an apartment, but Sometimes we have a problem with kind of noise, noise thing because uh, they're so sensitive of no, about noise. Then maybe I think we don't, uh, I, I don't have a good relationship with neighborhoods. In your country, do neighbors tend to be close to one another? Yeah, it depends on person, but... Um, Yeah, it depends on person. Okay. Now, how would you describe your neighborhood? Sorry, describe? Mm, how would you describe your neighborhood? Uh, so what's in your neighborhood? What's in? Mm. Sorry, I can't understand. Okay, no problem. We'll move on to the next question. Okay. So, is your neighborhood a safe place for children to play alone? Yeah. Uh, I have been in America, but when I was there, it's li it looks a little dangerous to, for children because every people looks a little annoying kind of that. Uh, they are just screaming in the load. Yeah. I think that's a little dangerous, looks like dangerous for children, kind of educating thing. Uh, but Korea is kind of safe country, I think, similar as Japan. Uh, yeah, then in my country, uh, just lots of children go to the academy, kind of piano or just studying math or science. And they just come back at night, late night. but. It doesn't cause any problem. Yeah, I think it's pretty safe place for children. Well, in the next part of the test, I'm going to give you a topic, and I would like you to speak for one to two minutes. Okay. You will have one minute to think about what you want to say, and I'll give you a pen and some paper to make notes if you want. Is that clear? Yep. Great, so here's your paper and your pen. And please turn it over. You have one minute to prepare. Now, I would like you to talk about sport. Remember, you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? Okay. Uh, first, I want to talk about uh, the match of 
American football because I was an uh, American football player when I was uh, in my university. I was in the American football club. Uh, yeah, and that time uh, I went to the Busan Stadium. It's kind of a huge place. We lent that stadium for our match uh, and we did match with first prize university. Mm, and that time, uh, lots of people came for watching our show. And that time was my first play, my first match to playing American football. That time I was nervous because I'm junior, uni I'm, I was jun university junior and maybe I didn't know all of the plan, kind of exercise plan. Yeah, then I was nervous, but my team leader, I think he is kind of cool guy. He always told me, it will be, everything will be okay. You can, you can do it. He talked like that. Then after that, I feel kind of ad adrenaline. And uh, at the first, first time, I did lots of fail. Then, but at the time, the other teammates said, it's okay, because it's your first time. Everything will be okay. And after that, I find my, I got my condition. And I... Okay. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you, but that's the two minutes. Well done. Well, thank you. I want to stay on the topic of sport. So in your opinion, is it important for children to play sport at school? Yeah, I think it's important. Uh, for example, Mass's case, we just use only plus or minus in the, our daily life. But sports thing is important, I guess, because uh, when you're playing sports with your classmate, you, it can grow up some your friendship and kind of leadership, leadership thing. And you can know the, you can know the way to conversation with friends or the other people. Yeah, then I think it's important for children. And how do you think technology is changing sport? Yeah. From what I was young, I was kind of sportsman, but when I was young, uh, the sports technology is not good as much as now. But when I playing the American football in uni, that time I was so surprised about uh, sports technology because there are lots of um, mechanical thing and medicine thing. Uh, I can't see kind of dead things uh, when I was young, then I was so surprised. Yeah, I think then, yeah, that's all. Are team sports more important than individual sports? Why or why not? Yeah, I agree about that question. I, I think the team sports is more, more important. As I told, a uh, kind of friendship and you know how to do the, uh, you can know how to pre pretend to person. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what makes a sporting event exciting to watch? Mm. For example, uh, one of my friends is really big fan of uh, Asnar, the football club, and he always watching that uh, Asnar's match 
and he feel like uh, he is the member. He feels like he is in the member of the Arsenal. Always he put uniform and he cheering the Arsenal. Uh, I think then, then I think. Uh, Spurs can make the person is the person Spurs can make the person uh, in the same team. Yeah. Okay, and uh, how does sport influence people's lives? Mm. Yeah, maybe actually they got lots of money and they got lots of famous. For example, Ronaldo or Messi, they have lots of followers in Instagram, but I think sometimes their life is a little annoying. But many people, uh, if some people find a day, they, they want to say hi or take a picture, they, they want to kind of that. Uh, actually, a few times they are glad too, but I don't want to... I think that uh, in the daily life, they their daily life is uh, not happy as much as the normal person. Well, thank you. That's the end of this practice IELTS speaking test.